Were you ever exactly, 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 exactly three feet tall? I claim yes. And the argument goes a little bit something like this. At one point in your life, you were less than three feet tall. So that was some time when you were a baby or whatever. And then for most of us, at this particular point, we're going to be over three feet tall. And then if I think about what my height progression as a function of time is gonna be, for the most part, this is a continuous function. You grow and you grow and you grow, and you might slow down as you approach adulthood, but there's no time when on one day you're one height and the next day you've like jumped a completely different amount. It's this continuous growth. So I'm gonna say that height is a continuous function of time, or at least close enough that we can approximate it as a continuous function of time. So I wanna make this into a theorem, this idea that if at one point you were beneath three, and at one point you were above three, and if you've got a continuous function, at one point you must be exactly three. I wanna make that into a function. It's gonna be called the intermediate value theorem. Now, I'm gonna build it up with a particular example of a graph. So maybe this represents height as a function of time, or maybe it represents something else, I don't know. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give two points, and I'm gonna put them on the graph. So the first of all, I'm going to give an A, which has a height of f of A, and I'm gonna give a point B, which has a height of f of B. So this is like saying I, at some point I was less than three, and at some point I was more than three feet. I got two specific points in time, and they're two different outputs. Now. Imagine I have some point in the middle. I was asking, what about if you're exactly three feet tall? So if I've got some point below and some point above, what if I choose some point which is in the middle of these two, a value I call n, and it's between the f of a and the f of b. Now, from the picture, it sure looks like there's some spot down here in between the a and the b where f of that value is precisely equal to the n. And indeed, we're gonna call that a point c some c where f of c is exactly this height n. So here's the statement of the intermediate value theorem. It looks like a little bit of a blur of symbols, but we're gonna compare it to this particular picture. The first point is that I've got a function f of x, that was my red curve here, and I'm assuming it's continuous on all the spots that we're interested in. We're choosing sort of uh, two spots down here in the domain, an a and a b, when I look at the closed interval AB, we're saying that F is continuous on that. In a little bit, we'll investigate maybe why it needs to be continuous, but let's assume that for now. And then I have some fancy math notation. If you have not seen this, it means element of, this sort of weird shaped E. And it says that N is an element of this interval, which is all of the points between F of A and F of B. So the n inside of this interval is a weird way of saying that this n here is just some number between f of a and f of b. And then my claim is that anytime I have that scenario, I've got this interval, my function's continuous on that interval, and I've got some value of n sandwiched between the f of a and the f of b, then the, the statement is then there is some value c, there's some c over here, it has to live between the A and B. That's why I say A less than or equal to C less than or equal to B. It lives inside of the A to B. And it has the property that if I take F of C, I get to this value of N. Or in other words, that my F of C is equal to N. So that's the intermediate value theorem.